Okay, so now we're going to use uh, the code that we wrote previously for where we just had one x value and use it in a case where we have several x values. Uh, so this is known as multiple linear regression. Uh, and so I'm going to make a copy of this code here and start working on that. Okay, so I'm going to name this uh, multiple linear regression. Uh, and let's see, I don't need, I don't need this. Um, and this is the old code that doesn't use vectors, so I don't need that. And I don't need that, and I don't need that. Okay, so now I have uh, the code basically where we left off before. Now, the first thing is to get some data to work with. Uh, and so I'm going to go up here and get this data from a website. And I'll include uh, the URL that I use that you can see here. I'll include that in the video description below so that you don't have to type all this in. So basically, all this does is it goes to this website. Uh, we can, why don't we take a look at it? So it goes to this website here which looks like this and, and gets the file. So let's run that. So there it is, it's done. We don't really, there's a lot of output we don't need. And so what it does here, if I type ls, right, it, it basically puts the, the file on the website on this, on this server here. Okay, and we can take a look at it. Uh, and it should look exactly like it does on the website. Yes. Okay. So this is a CSV file, so a comma separated variables file. And so what it includes, um, well, it's, it's the name and, and some other stuff, but it's, it's pretty hard to read this. Uh, so raw CSV is not, it's not the easiest to understand. So the answer to this, uh, as usual, is to work with pandas. So let's import the pandas. Um, and get our data out of the file. So we need to read the file. We need to read the CSV file. Um, and, oh, and the name of the file is this. Uh, and that should get it into a data frame. So let's look at that. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so what you can see here uh, is that we have different molecules. That's the name of the molecule. Uh, and then, uh, let's skip this right now. Then it has a bunch of uh, properties of the molecule. And then here it has the measured log solubility in moles per liter. So basically what we're going to do in this exercise here is we're going to try to take some of this data, some of these molecular properties, and see if we can use linear regression to predict the solubility of the molecule. Okay, now you don't have to worry too much about what these things are, uh, but, but as you can see it's something called minimum degree, which I actually don't know what it is, uh, molecular weight, number of hydrogen bond donors, number of rings in the molecule, number of rotatable bonds, and the polar surface area. So if you, if you don't know exactly what these things are, don't, don't worry about it too much. It's just, uh, just think of them as, as variables, input. Um, that's gonna give an output that hopefully tells us or predicts how soluble a molecule is. Uh, yes, okay, so let's see. I don't, I don't uh, need to Well, I need to pick what I'm going to do here. So for example, this is, the, this is another model that was used to predict it. So I don't want that. I don't want the name. Uh, I basically just want these, uh, these three things here. So how do I, so I need to make that, those my X values. So let me try to get that in a more copy pasteable form. Um, 
let's see what did not work here. Oh, yeah, obviously I want to print that. Okay, so this is some stuff I can, I, I can basically grab, copy, and paste here. So I want, oh, actually I don't need a new cell here. Uh, well, maybe that wouldn't hurt. Let's let's have a new cell. I can always move it around later. And so I want my x values to be. It comes from data. And I want uh, the minimum degree, whatever that is, molecular weight, number of rings, number of rotatable bonds, and uh, all all the way up here to polar surface area. Okay, so let's see if that works. I have to go over here to get a new line. Uh, let's see what the data frame looks like. That looks pretty good, right? So that's my X here, and I have one, two, three, four, five, uh, six X values. Uh, actually, I can, I don't, if I'm lazy, I don't need to count. I can just look at it here. Okay, so six X values, and I have, uh, 1,128 molecules. So, so, okay, so that's good to know. So that, that's gonna be my, uh, my X here. So I should take that, copy it and put it, I don't need this anymore. This is my X, like so. And now let's see what else do I need to change. Mm. Well, I guess my Y, yes. So, okay, this calculates the, the length of X. Let's, let's make sure, let's make sure that works. So, Oops, I don't want to do that there. I want to do that here. Uh, if I get the length of x, no, that's that's 128. Uh, so basically, I need you. Yeah, that's no, that's exactly what I want. So I want 100, uh, 1128 ones here that I need to insert. Um, so actually, let me just copy this code. Here and just make sure that that does what it should. Yes. Um, no, I want XP here. Yes. All right. So you can see I have um, a new column here. Right. That's all ones. So this also looks like all ones, but that's just this minimum degree. So I bet that has that also has some twos and things like that. So we can actually look at it. Um, right, so that has some, some ones here as well, and some twos. So let's see if I pick XP, uh, if I pick the third one, right, that has a two here, exactly. So this is the one that I insert. That's, that's the one for my bias. Okay, so that works. Um, my y value is not called y anymore. It's called, where are you? Yeah, it's called the measured solubility per liter. That's what I want to predict. So that goes here. And that, uh, let's see, I probably don't, well, I may need that, so let's let's see. Uh, and okay, now I need. So, how many weights do I need? So I have. Um, I look at the shape of XP. I have seven, right? I have seven columns, so I need seven random start values here. 
uh, and let's uh, make this one for now and let's uh, let's see how that goes that that should work uh, famous last words let's run it okay well I, I got something um, I didn't get an error message it, it looks like it works so let's um, let's see if we can actually get the error to converge so let's try 10,000. Ah, okay. So that that did not go so well. Uh, so so NAN is not a number. And so I think probably what's happening here is you can see this error here is really huge. Right? So that error, the error is huge. So that means I get a huge gradient. And that means I take a huge step and probably makes make the error even larger and things like that. So I want to take a because I have a, a large gradient, right? I want to take a smaller step here. So let me try to reduce the learning rate and see if that does anything. No. Uh, so actually, so so I get a. Of course, the error is different because I have a, every time I run this, I get a new set of random values. So let me just. Uh, always pick the same random values for now so I can so that I can separate the effect of this error changing and the learning rate um, and so the way you do that is with seed so you don't really have to know um, what that does other than it gives you the same random values every time so you can see every time I run it right the the error here is exactly the same Okay, so now I can fiddle with my learning rate. Uh, so let's try that. No, still too large. Let's try that. Ah, okay, now I get some numbers. Uh, and does it look like it's... Well, yes, I mean, it's it hasn't stopped changing, so I probably need to run some more epochs. Uh, well, let me, let me try 50,000. And see if, ah okay so yeah I get the error down further it's still changing uh, let's try a hundred thousand okay so I mean obviously the code is working right what I need to figure out is is basically the number of epochs and maybe I can maybe I should try dare I try to make the learning rate just a little bit larger so it'll go faster yeah that also works Okay, so, so, so basically this is working. We have a code that can predict solubility uh, based on some properties of the molecule. And so the only thing that really remains is to, is to play around with this and see how, how low you really can get, get this error. And so I'm going to leave that, I'm going to leave that to you. Let's, let's see how, how uh, with what combination of learning rate and epochs um, can you get the error to be as small as possible or at least converge? So, so have, have fun with that and uh, maybe leave some uh, your, your performance or your lowest score in the comments and so we can see how, how well you do.